guys, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a really cute birthday card with a couple different Lawn Fawn sets. I'm using the Hang In There, the Critters in the Jungle, Party Animal, and Happy Summer. I just love to combine Lawn Fawn sets on cards. I will also be using the Echo Park Jungle Safari 6x6 pattern paper pad. And I'm going to start by coloring up my images with some Copic markers. So the sloth is going to be my main image, so I want to make sure that he takes center stage. And for him I'm going to be using a series of E40s. I'll be using E40, E43, E44, E47, and E49. So for his fur that covers the majority of his body, my darkest shade is actually the E47. And the first thing I'm going to do is just go in and draw in my shadows. I'm kind of giving myself an outline. I'm imagining that my light source is in the top left corner. And so I'm just trying to shade accordingly. And it's not going to be perfect and I don't need it to be perfect. It's just a card, you know, but... Um, I try to at least make it um, consistent throughout the image. So then I'm going to take my E44 and I'm going to blend out that E47 a bit. I'm going to especially blend it out um, and drag that color up on the two legs that are on the other side of the tree branch because there would not be very much light getting in there. So I'm just going to blend that out. And then I'm going to grab my E43 and I'm going to use that as my lightest shade on his fur. I'm just going to fill everything else in. So now that I have my colors laid down where I want them to go, I'm actually going to go back through each of these steps and make sure that my blending is really good. I like to have a seamless transition. I really don't like a lot of harsh lines and I like there to be enough saturation on the paper that um, he really looks nice and full and um, comes to life on the page. And sometimes that requires uh, two coats of your markers, especially if it's a little bit of a larger image like this guy. So once I was happy with the blending and thought he looked nice and furry, I realized that he needed a little more definition right around his face. So I just added a little bit more shading with the E47 and then the E44. And then I gave him a ring of shadow with the E43 around the inside of his face. And I'm blending that out with the E40. And that's just going to make it look like it's popped out a little bit like his face would be. So sloths usually have these darker patches right over their eyes. So for those, I'm using the E49 as my darkest. And I'm just sticking to the outside edge. And then I'm using the E47 to blend that out, and then just the E44 right over the eyes so that you can still see them. And we'll make sure that those stand out even better a little bit later. I didn't want to make a brown sloth on a brown tree, so I decided to color my tree branch in grays instead. So I'm using the W7 as my darkest, and again, just starting with that darkest shadow at the bottom. Then I'm going to blend that up a little bit with the W5, making sure to leave plenty of room on that branch for you know a sunny highlight at the top. Using the W3 next, and then I'm just going to finish everything with the W1, just making sure to blend that really well. And I'm also going to use the W1 to just color in the little um, end pieces right there. And I was pretty happy with how that turned out. I know I tend to usually think of trees as being brown, but there are plenty that have kind of a gray or silverish color bark. Okay, so moving on to my parrot, I'm going to start with his body. And I'm using R29, R39, and R59. And again, just coloring darkest to lightest. So I use the R59 for my shadow, blended with the R39, and then I'm finishing with that really bright R29. This is my favorite red combo. While I have that out, I'm also going to use my R39 and my R29 to color in the bottom stripe on the party hat and one of the polka dots and the little streamers on the other party hat. 
The top section of his feathers is going to be yellow, and I'm using Y13, Y15, and Y17. My Y15 is a chow, that's why it has a different kind of cap. And I'm just going in with that Y17, and I did my shadow on his wings. I'm also doing the shadow on my party hats and the little um, frosting on the cake. And then I'm blending out with the Y15, and then I'll finish with the Y13. And I accidentally colored um, a stripe on the party hat that meant to be orange, but that's okay, I just left it alone. The orange will cover that up later. For the middle group of feathers on his wings, I'm using YG05, YG07, and YG09. And again, starting with that YG09, and while I'm using that, I'm also going to color in some details on my party hat. Try to use uh, my markers while I have them out for everything I need them for, if I know in advance that that's what I'm going to be doing. So I'm using the YG07 for the middle and the YG05 for my highlight. And then for the bottom portion of his um, wing, I'm using B02, B04, and B06. Again, just working on those little details on the accessories. And then blending out his wing with the B04 and finishing with the B02. And this is another really great blue combo that I would recommend if you're looking for something nice and bright. For the top of his tail feather, I'm using B21, B23, and B26. And that's just a teeny tiny area that I'll just blend in quickly. Added a little bit more of that B23. And then for my last combo on his tail, I'm going to use BV02. BV13 and BV04. BV04 is a little bit darker than the BV13, so I'm using the BV13 as my mid-tone and the BV02 as my highlight. And then I'm going to use my favorite orange combo for bright things. I have a different favorite for a little bit of a muted look for things like pumpkins, um, but for a bright orange, I love this combo, and it's YR04. YR07 and YR09. So I'm starting with the YR09 as my shadow and I'm going to color the parrot's beak and feet. I'm also going to color in these three little flowers and the flame on the candle and the last uh, stripe on that party hat just covered up that yellow. And then I just blended everything out with the YR07 and finished off with the YR04. And now I'm going back with that YR09 and just adding a teeny stripe down the center of each petal of those flowers because I just thought that would give them a bit of a more tropical look. I forgot to do the centers while I had my yellows out, so I'm just doing that quickly with the Y15 and the Y17. And then I'm taking the E51 and the E53 to color in the bottom of my little cake. I decided to add the BV02 to my candle, and then I realized that I had forgotten to color in the rest of his little feet, the parrot's little feet, so I just finished that with the YR04. Okay, so for the leaves, I have three different color combos that I'm going to be using because I really wanted a lot of variety in my leaves. I wanted them to look you know, I'm trying to make a tropical scene, and so there would be a lot of different colored leaves in there. So the first combo I'm using is the G14, the G17, G19, and G28 as my darkest. And just like the sloth, I'm actually going to do a double layer of all of these leaves. I just found that um, that was the best way to get a really good blend. I really loved these color combos together, but um, there was definitely some streaking if I only did one coat of each. So I did go back over each of these. I also colored a bunch more leaves off camera because I didn't want it to just be really repetitive showing you the same thing over and over, and I knew I was going to need quite a bit more. Um, but I did show you just one of each color combo. And I hope you guys find this helpful. I had a comment recently that someone said that they preferred the videos without coloring because they always fast forward through the coloring 
um, when I do include it. And I totally understand that, and that's okay. Um, but I hope you also understand I do get a lot of people who say that they find the coloring really helpful. And coloring is my passion. I just love to do it so much. So I have posted several videos recently where I did not have any coloring or very minimal coloring. And uh, so I thought today I would include it. And I do have a playlist on my channel that is all videos with no coloring. If you're only interested in that, you can definitely check that out. And I also have videos with various coloring mediums. I have one for Copics, I have one for Spectrum Noir, I have one for watercolor, and uh, all those different things. So you can check those out um, if you're ever interested in seeing more of the kind of video that you like to see. So that second combo, you saw the marker caps at the top of the screen, but it was G20, G21, G24, and G28 again. G28 is my darkest that I have. And for this last combo, I wanted a nice, bright, fresh green color. So I'm using YG01, YG05, YG07, and YG09. And once again, going over the entire leaf with a complete second layer. And then when I finish, I usually just go right down the very center line with the darkest shade one last time to really increase that depth and dimension and make them look like they're folded in the center. So now that I have all my images colored, I'll just die cut them with the matching dies. So I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I wanted to make a card with a recessed window. So I want to use this first piece of pattern paper as a frame that I'm going to pop up, but it's a little bit weak to just use pattern paper as a frame. So I'm going to add some strength to that by just gluing down a sheet of plain white cardstock. This is just cheap white cardstock from Walmart. And I'm just gonna glue that right down to the back before I run that through my cuddle bug. I also made sure to add a lot of glue in the center because I will also be cutting my window right out of this. So I'm using the Lawn Fawn Large Stitched Rectangle Stackables for the outside frame and the Lawn Fawn Stitched Journaling Card Die for the center frame. So I'm just going to line those up as straight as I can with my eye and then I'm going to run that through my cuddle bug. And then I have this nice focal panel that I can use for another project. And I have this frame that I can um, add foam tape to the back to pop up over my card. First, I'm going to take this jungle print that is going to fill in the recessed area of my card. And I'm just going to glue that down in the center with some Tombow Mono Multi Glue. I love this glue because um, you have a little bit of time to position it if you don't have it exactly right the first time. So I'm just laying my frame right over top and then I can adjust that and make sure that none of the green cardstock is going to poke out. Then I'm going to take the foam tape that I've placed on the back of this frame and I'm going to peel the backer sheets off just halfway. And I'm going to create some little tabs for myself, making those stick out each of the four sides. Then I can line up that frame and it's going to stick to the card because some of the tape is exposed, but it um, will not be completely secure. So you can see I adjusted just a little bit there before I peeled off the rest of the tape. And then I can just smooth that down when I have it completely straight. So now I'm ready to start adhering my images and creating my little scene. But first I want to add my little party hats to the sloth and the parrot. So I'm just using a little bit more of Tombow Mono to do that. I'll be adding some of my images with the Tombow Mono and others I'll be popping up with foam tape. Just so I have a little bit of a variety of dimension. The first thing I'm going to adhere is my sloth since he's my focal image and I'm going to make sure that I can cover up the end of that branch with some leaves. Over on the right where it cuts off, it could make him look like he's just floating in space if I didn't um, cover up the end of that and kind of anchor him down with those leaves so that it appears that there is a tree off to the right that you just can't see. So I'm going to add a bit of foam tape up in that corner so that these leaves will be a little bit better supported. 
and then I'll add a little Tombow to the back of them and then I can just push them into place where I want them. I'm making sure to vary the sizes and the colors in each cluster that I add. And then I will also be adding my little orange flowers here and there. I've taken the Happy Birthday sentiment from the Hang In There stamp set and stamped that on some wood grain pattern paper from that same Echo Park uh, Jungle Safari 6x6. And um, I've die cut that using the Lawn Fawn Everyday Sentiment Banners. And I just popped up the center with some foam tape and added some glue on the ends. And then I'm going to add my parrot so that he is sitting on the edge of that uh, sign there. And then I'll just tuck a small leaf behind him and another one in front of him because I want there to be like a lot of overgrowth like there is in the jungle. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this on video before, but I actually lived for a year of my life in the jungle of Cameroon, West Africa. My husband and I went there when we were still young newlyweds. We'd been married a little bit over a year and actually our oldest son was three months old when we left for Cameroon and um, it was very primitive. The people lived in mud huts with palm tree roofs and uh, my husband ran a health center there. We were just filling in for a year for someone who needed to go home for a year to Switzerland. Um, but it was a really big adventure and, uh, yeah, really beautiful and really wonderful people. And this card really takes me back. <laughs> and actually when we left Cameroon after a year, I was 20 months pregnant with my second son. So he got to be in Africa too. He just didn't see it. <laughs> So I had to add some ants to the bottom of the card because there were so many bugs in the jungle and uh, I just thought that would be a cute little touch to um, bring in that happy summer set that's kind of meant for a picnic card but certainly suits a jungle scene and um, they're carrying the little birthday cake. For the inside of my card I'm going to put it inside my Misty and I've got the sloth image and an extra sentiment already ready to go. I'm going to ink those up with some Lawn Fawn Noble Fur ink and just press that down and um, the lid of my Misty got caught on my markers that were sticking out of my storage unit right there so I um, had to re-stamp that a second time and actually I still didn't quite get the, uh, the middle portion so I just pressed that down again without even inking it up again and uh, Love the Misty for that. That would have totally been a bust after all that hard work without it. For a final finishing touch, I'm going to take my Jelly Roll Glaze Pen by Sakura and just go over his eyes a little bit. That's going to make them nice and bright and shiny and really make them stand out against that dark um, mask around his eyes. And that is going to complete our card for today. I hope you guys really enjoyed and... Thank you so much for sticking with me. I know it was a bit of a longer one due to all the coloring, so let me know in the comments how you feel about that. Here's a couple extra videos you may also be interested in, and if you don't already subscribe to my channel, I invite you to do that by clicking on my photo. Have a great day, everybody. Goodbye.